So the other thing I wish to mention is because of these investigations and the harassment I was going through, I was spending a lot of time at the coffee bar uh, documenting all of this, um, especially with the case with uh, senior, uh, Steve Sylvester's uh, harassment issue there and, and all of this. I was getting in t contact with the... Uh, with uh, the Obitsman, um, but nothing was happening. Um, so the other thing that happened was is there was a bulletin that came out um, for a, a position in the stores department. I, would, I wanted to move from being in LA into the stores uh, um, um, for six months. It was a seasonal full-time position at the Vancouver Maintenance Center. Um, I applied on May the 1st, two, uh, 2018. My signature is all here. And uh, this is uh, the, the seasonal position would go from May the 18th to October the 15th. I figured, hey, it would get me away from all of this for, for six months, but uh, this would not be the case. And you're going to find out what they ended up doing, um, and I'm going to show you. Um, they ended up giving the position to uh, three junior guys uh, got that, and, and I didn't get the opportunity, even though I was the senior man and I had more experience in stores than any of the three. They just got hired on in uh, baggage. I worked in stores when I first got hired on my first year, um, once a week in stores. So I had I was more than qualified um, than any of the junior guys. The only thing was is that I never received official training. They just shoved me in there once a week. Um, you know. Okay, so I have another hazard identification here, uh, dated May the 3rd, uh, from myself for unsafe act, unsafe equipment, unsafe condition, unsafe use of equipment. May the 3rd, again, unqualified people in the Vancouver Maintenance Center operating cranes. When person told foreman he is unqualified, was told to use crane anyways. What was the potential consequence? Never been trained and can result in an accident oper and operating illegally. Recommendations to prevent recurrence. Have unqualif unqualified people trained. Only qualified people to use uh, crane. Corrective action taken, pending, but reported in this document as a corrective action. So there you have it. And again, this is just an ongoing and ongoing uh, issue, as you can see. And so then on May the 4th, like I mentioned before, uh, Three days after I applied for this position, I ended up getting the 40 demerits from the investigation from Herc's letter and the investigation regarding Dave Desanya's letter. But all this is going to be clear here. Okay, so in my logbook here for May 9, 2018, uh, Natalie Obadia. She disqualified herself as a secretary uh, from the office because of the bad uh, energy. Also, this was the day that uh, Mr. Hurt Kalurgis and Steve Sylvester left property together in Steve's car. Um, this was also the, the day that Mohammed Khan disqualified himself because of bad energy. Also, uh, this was also the day at 1 o'clock that Herc and Sean Terry met me in the office to give me my 40 demerits. Um, I spoke with Ron Shore regarding uh, 40 demerits and to grieve them. Um, he also mentioned at this time, um, uh, you know, just to, uh, um, to, to, to stand by and, and, and take it easy. Uh, this was also the day that the EAP, uh, Employee Assistance Program, called me. Uh, where I spoke with uh, Anthony in regards to being harassed at uh, the workplace. Anthony, um, I would spoke with on the phone for about uh, an hour, and he told me to continue to do what I was doing in regards to um, reporting and documenting um, any further actions that are going to come against me. Um, I told him about it all, and he was quite helpful. It's a good thing that we have an EAP program, but again, um, he can only do so much as a counselor. Uh, this was also the day that I called the Obitsman, uh, Louis and uh, left a voicemail again in attempts to contact uh, him um, for assistance also. Um, on May the 10th, uh, I reported another um, in my PSI here that no blue flag protection on C6 while, work were, while workers were working all day. 
Um, got the uh, form to sign that says Adam Grant was working in a very professional and safe manner. Uh, so again, I have that signed. Okay, so on May the 11th, uh, I was switching um, with uh, Mr. Hurt Kalurgis. He was uh, driving, and uh, basically what had happened was is a major uh, incident. Uh, I had put in control, as the ground person, we were coming into uh, track uh, S1, and uh, I... The foreman, uh, Alan Kosh, had requested uh, for control of the move. He was on the trailing end of the, the train. We had uh, established proper communication um, so that the driver and that the foreman and myself, that control of the move was now going over to Alan Kosh. During this time, um, he was making up, uh, he was getting the train to back up. About five, ten minutes had passed, and then all of a sudden he screamed on the radio to come to an immediate stop. What happened was, is one of the RCTs whose name is Devin, uh, was, first of all, uh, the VIA controller hadn't walked uh, the train properly when the control of the move had gone into his possession. Um, and one of the uh, RCTs was uh, doing work. He put a, a hose in one of the, the cars when the, the train was uh, stopped. Alan had got the train to move again. Uh, basically, as the train was backing up, the uh, hose was still connected. The RCT went to try and get the hose out. It ended up wrapping around his arm and throwing him um, quite far. He ended up hitting his face on the ground, and uh, it ripped out uh, the, the, the hose casing and, and gear. I'll show you guys photos of this. But the reason why this is important, because I'm going to show you in my next investigation... Um, what Alan Kosh had told me at another date in regards to uh, Foreman being able to switch trains. So, um, yeah, so that was May the 11th, and that's in, in my logbook there. I got, uh, again, they wouldn't sign my logbooks anymore, um, so I just kept uh, keeping track anyways. May 17th. They give it to three junior guys that applied. I applied for all the positions, and it states here, Mr. T. Wong, seniority date, May 7, 2018. Alex Cabana, 2000, April 4, 2017. Uh, B. Meldrum, seniority date, May the 7, 2018. Now, how come the senior man, my seniority date is May 1, 2015, None of these guys have any experience working in stores. I applied, but management kept me from being able to move into stores, so that way they could. Uh, I was going to get further harassed here, and you're going to see it all. I'm going to show you, but here is the actual documents of me trying to move into a different environment um, and 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 get away from all of these. Uh, allegations and, and investigations they kept coming after me. I was spending hours in the coffee shop uh, documenting everything. Um, I got in touch with the Obitsman to, uh, to no avail. He was going down to the United States uh, um, and then he, he said he'd make an attempt to come out to Vancouver but he never did. So I'll move on. I'm going to show you some more audio evidence. How's Natalie doing? Is she okay? Oh man, she's so happy right now. Yeah, she, why did she leave? She hated, like, she didn't like the atmosphere in there. In, in the office over here at the BMC? The whole at BMC. Yeah. yeah. Dave's been under a bunch of stuff too? Yeah, I've been special. I have to write the letter too. See, he, he had to write this letter basically with all these false allegations about me because he got fucking pressured. It's like, how is that fucking fair? 
You see what I'm saying, Johnny? Oh, yeah. So I just got 40 cookies. Yeah. Because they fucking brought him into a room, right. told him, hey, you write this letter and then go on vacation. And then fucking I have to deal with this while while he's away. And yeah. now, you see the tactic? Trying to get me fired. Ron Shore, the guy above Herc, said, hey, Adam, they want, they want to railroad you. And I didn't know what was going on. But, but hey, deep down in my heart, deep down in my heart, I knew that Dave Desanya, this is not Dave. Dave and I are friends. Yeah. You know, I did my taxes over at his house. Yeah. You know, Dave, we've been good friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like, oh, yeah, that's but, Christian no, no, they fuck you. No, they put, they put him in a fucking corner, yeah. up in the officer, Steve Sylvester and fucking Herc. Tell him to fucking write this letter about me. Mm. And then I get 40 fucking demerits and almost fired. Well, now they keep investigating you more. Yeah. So I thought you know, Mo, Mo was going to be done. Mo got a call from someone that Cynthia is locked in her office. She was locked in her office. <laughs> Anyways, while she was locked in her office, the, all the supervisors were all outside of the office and they were scheming something. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, uh, the supervisors were outside of her office scheming they were, something? They were, they were all like cuddled together and then they, they were scheming I think how to get rid of you or something and then Mo, Get rid of me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You gotta talk to Mo and then Mo walked by because he was supposed to open the door for Cynthia Yeah So he came in there and he noticed all I just want to know why they need me for all this shit you know? Why they cannot just Talk to you and solve the problem. Well, you know why? Because you, with the, like, remember my remember my character letter reference. You said, "Hey, Adam, I want to stay neutral because yeah. you were scared Herc was going to come after you." Yeah. So like, uh, you know what? I understood that. So your name was the only one on Herc's letter that didn't sign my character letter reference. Yeah. So that's why they wanted you to write that letter. Yeah, so it's like it's a master plan. Yeah. They knew about it already. They had talked about it. You see what I'm saying? By that day, when I, when I first seen it, like, I, I was like, Come on, I felt hurt because I'm like, you know, Dave Desanya, I'm like, there's something else going on here. So I'm like, uh, so, so I didn't take it personal, Dave, because you know what? Because I said, you know what? I know Dave Desanya. Like, Dave Desanya is like a good guy, like, and me and you have been friends since we since I started here. I know, it sucks. You know? And then, at the same time, I understand your situation because, you know, you've got a daughter and all this stuff, but like, you yeah, know, so put me in that situation for many years too. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. You know? He says there, they put me in this situation many times. Dave, throughout this audio stuff, which I'm going to show you, he's been made to do these kinds of uh, things for management several times. Because he feels that if he doesn't, they're going to come after him. It doesn't matter to them if it's thrown up. They just want to like, go against you and find something that yeah. gives you a hard time, but they already can find it. So they just used you to to, to create that uh, fucking... Full honey sandwich. Yeah, and squeeze me, and squeeze you. Yeah, it's like, okay, I don't want to be part of this. I told them so many times. Yeah. 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 Here is where you're gonna see where Dave uh, is asking me if they've ever asked me to do like special missions. Um, just check this out. I don't know if I was okay with it, and then it's kind of like this. Did I? Only because I wanted to do it. Really? Yeah. So they never ask you for like special missions? No. Not. No, they, no one's ever asked me to write letters against other really? employees, Dave. No. Never. And in fact, I guess you've been lucky enough. But I, I, yeah, I thought like, holy crow, like, uh, you know, and I wish maybe, uh, like, I just didn't know that you've been going through this. Yeah, it's been good. Like, like I mean, like, since I've been working at Vitorio, I was like, the beginning was okay, but since I've been working at Vitorio, it's a different world. That's what, that's what other people have been telling me now. Yeah. See, I was kind of like, always optimistic. Yeah, I know. You know? And always trying to be a positive influence, right? And other people know that, but then, like, I had no idea this, like, kind of dark energy has been yeah, here. Yeah, really You know, Dave, I did not know. And it's like, you know, this, you're saying they keep investigating you, like, three times a month. It's like, fuck, why do that? Yeah. They did their plan and all that shit, and I have told that, like, they've done all the part of this, right? Yeah. And they kept fucking me. I was like, okay, 
Yes, but they've been blind there for a while. But I can explain. I guess so, yes. Or uh, maybe other people too. Yeah. Oh, it's all you. No, but what happened is now you're more Johnny, Natalie. Yeah, and that's about that will, those people will be here forever. I so thought so too. Yeah. yeah. Every time I was talking about them before, but like, you know. Well, so I've been doing this. I was like, oh, this joke is awesome. So were they asking you about to, to, like, to do things for other people or just me? Like they had a master plan for me, you're saying? Yeah, yeah, like you should, like, like yeah, they asked me. Oh, but like in the past, they wanted me like, to talk against you and something like that. Oh, okay. But that's like a little, little, I don't know, I never did that. Yeah, yeah. So, but they've had like a master plan against me. I think so. Yeah. They're picking up on here. I just really wonder why. I wish I could just like figure it out. Like, okay, what's the reason like why they don't like you? Because they didn't like you. So something happened. Yeah. I wish I could just be honest and say, okay, we don't like you because of this. Okay. Yeah. Okay, like starts in your face, like stop playing games and just sit down and the fuck's going on with. Yeah. It's like, well, we have to do all this. Well, and what I don't understand is that they're they're open to like talking with certain people to write to get them to try and write or to get them to write letters against people. Yeah. Well, why? Like, why are the companies asking you this? Yeah. But did you like ever tell them to fuck off that you didn't? Like, did you tell them, hey, I don't want to do that? Yeah, I sent them all the beginning and then told us. And they kept asking. Yeah. Holy fuck. It's kind of weird to I wish I could leave too, but I don't know where to go. I mean, like, unless I go back to the day. But then, if I was single, big deal. Of it. But that problem is all with my daughter, it makes it super, it takes super complicated. It's like, oh my god. So, like, do you feel that, like, if you hadn't have made that, like, you know, that false letter about me, <laughs> do you think, like, they would have tried to fire you? No idea, I don't want to know. But what did it to John? Yeah. Yeah. You know what Dave said? Like, I'm just, I don't know. Don't you tell me this, those guys. It's like, okay, like. So then comes uh, May the 24th. And now I get another call to investigation. It says, Dear Mr. Adam Grant, this is to advise you that you are hereby notified to attend an informal investigation to determine the facts and circumstances surrounding insubordination, not listening to supervisor's instruction. The investigation is scheduled to take place on May 30th, 2018 at 8 o'clock in the boardroom at the Vancouver Maintenance Center in accordance with the collective agreement number one, rule two, four point two. Please ensure you have a duly authorized representative with you Regards, uh, Sean Terry, and it was CC'd to the local chair for person, Mr. Hurt Clergis. And uh, so the exhibit was uh, one of the exhibits here. Um, there's uh, three exhibits actually in total. Uh, and then actually what happened was is uh, Mr. Sean Terry forgot about the investigation for May 30th. Um, so then I get a call, I get a new call for investigation. And again, it's in regards to uh, insubordination, not following supervisor's instruction. Uh, the investigation is scheduled to take place on June 1st, 2018 at nine o'clock in, in the boardroom at the Vancouver Maintenance Center. Um, again, regards uh, Sean Terry. So the three exhibits that we get here now, I'm going to read to you. Now, the insubordination basically comes, uh, this investigation is for me um, using a private shower um, in the foreman's change room. Now, I've been using that shower since I began at Via Rail. I had permission from um, Diego Mendez. Everybody knew that I was showering in there. I bought a brand new shower curtain. I bought brand new cloth holders. I got different colored cloths uh, for the foreman, and I and I set it all up. I don't like showering with uh, a group of men in a in a shower. And at the same time, I'd gotten permission because of medical reasons. I had a staphylococcus uh, infection many years ago. 
um, that was a serious injury, and it came from showering from a um, public shower. Um, and I have medical proof for all of this, but the thing was is there was never any issues until now. Again, they, this was another reason to come after me and, and directly attack me. So here's the, the date. So Sean Terry, he put together an email here, sent Thursday, May the 10th, to Stephen Sylvester. So, and it says today at 2.10 I went to the supervisor change room. See, my, my shift had already finished at 2 o'clock. When I went to enter the door, I found Adam Grant coming out of the supervisor change room. I asked Adam why he was coming out of the change room. He told me that he was showering in there because of a medical reason. He said he had permission from the supervisor since the beginning. I asked him, the supervisor gave you permission to be in here? He answered me, yes. He went on to talk about his previous investigation and how we were going to move forward from here. Stephen Sylvester then came into the hallway and joined our conversation. He asked what was going on. Stephen Sylvester asked, were you in the supervisor's change room? Adam said, yes, I have a medical condition and the supervisors have given me permission to. Steve said, I know the supervisors talked to you about not using the supervisor's change room. Why are you lying? Adam said, I'm not lying. Steve then said, are you saying that I didn't ask you last week if you were still showering in the supervisor change room and you said, no, I never go in there? Adam answered with, I thought when you were talking to me it was in the heat of the moment and you didn't mean it. Steve said, didn't the other supervisor ask you to not shower in there anymore? Adam responded with, Alan only told me to clean out the locker I had in there. I had a, I had a locker in there, uh, again, since I began um, with uh, VRL, it was in the foreman's change room because nobody was using the foreman's change room at, at that time. In fact, I organized a full locker cleanup for all of the lockers that had locks on them still that weren't still being used but had, um, so we went through and started getting all the lockers organized and I personally cleaned them out. I did the same thing with the um, unionized men's change room. I cleaned up over a hundred lockers, organized the locker cleanup program, and um, the foreman and everybody was actually quite happy about this because there had been stuff in there that had been left for years, like people that had retired, people that were no longer with the company anymore, so it was a proactive approach to help get, because I knew there'd be new hires coming in, I wanted there to be space, so at this time, which I'll get to, but anyways, it says here, Steve responded with, so they never told you to stop showering there? Alan and Brad are lying to me and you are telling the truth? Adam said, I'm not saying they are lying. They just told me to clean out my locker. I said to Adam, I thought you told me you have permission when I first asked you. Adam responded with, yes, I did. I said, well, we were going to ask the supervisors if they told you to stay out of the shower or not. We said bye to Adam and he went into the unionized change room. Steve and I went to Steve's office and Adam arrived again about five minutes later. He started talking about his medical condition again and saying that he is a hard worker. He, uh, he asked if there is something he can do and Steve said, no, it's time for you to go home now. Adam started talking again and Steve said, this matter will be investigated. Please leave now. Adam left the office. I then got a call that Adam Grant was downstairs pleading his case to Brad, Luke, and Evan instead of going home as Steve had asked him to do. What I'd done is I'd gone down and spoke with the uh, foreman that, and basically stated that um, I meant no disrespect if I was using the foreman's uh, private shower, that I'd been using that for a long time, and they all knew that. In fact, there'd be times where they'd come into change and we'd be having friendly conversation and joking around like normal human beings should. And, and, and I'd done this for since I began. They all knew that I was in there. They knew that I bought the shower curtain. They knew that I kept it all clean in there. I, again, I was uh, doing janitor duties and, and all of these kinds of things. And so, again, there, if I'm guilty of using a private shower, then, then I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of that. Like, but I stated to them, I won't use it ever again, and I'll just shower at home from now on. So, again, Bradley Smith, he sent this on Friday, May the 11th, and uh, it says, hello all, yesterday afternoon at around uh, 2.20, 2.30, Adam Grant came into the super office downstairs wanting to talk with us. He said he was not to use the manager's locker room anymore and that he was under the impression that he was allowed to use the showers. That was my impression. About two or three months ago, I had a discussion with Adam about this very topic. I told him he was not to be using the manager's locker room. This is not true. At that time, he said he thought he was allowed to use the shower, but not any lockers. I told him I was unaware of the arrangement, but that moving forward, he was not to use the facilities. 
Yesterday he told me he thought that we had talked about a staph infection last time this came up and that I had agreed to let him use the shower. I told Adam that we did not talk about any infection, that I had made it clear last time we talked about it that he was not to use the manager's locker room for any reason. This is not true, and again, Bradley Smith was the foreman from the first pull-apart. Adam went on to ask if it had something to do with his performance. I told him that it was nothing personal or performance-related. He continued to ask if it was because we were upset with his performance or if we were upset at him for bringing up issues in his hazard identification forms. I know this has been brought up with him by myself and at least two other management staff in the past, but he doesn't seem to accept the message. Brad. So on November 28th, uh, 2017, at exactly 10 a.m. in my logbook here, I did speak with Alan Kosh. Um, so he is correct. In November 2017, um, that we did uh, speak. And basically what happened was is there was no over, there was an overtime sh uh, shift for janitor. Herc, uh, Herc Kalurgis said did a no-show. He didn't show up for work. Foreman Al said that Dave uh, is in and uh, that I will do janitor duties. And that they will not that they're not going to cover the uh, the extra shift. I seemed confused, and uh, and thought that that it was that it was weird, and that they weren't going to call an overtime shift for the uh, the missing um, union member that wasn't there. Al said uh, that they were not going to call for the overtime shifts, and asked me if there was an issue regarding this. He also said that if there were no switchmen, uh, like an extra switchman, that he could move the train. So, since I'm going to be janitor and uh, Dave Desanye uh, was in, he he said he was basically saying that he could move the train with uh, Dave Desanye and be a switchman. So I asked if he was qualified to do so, and he seemed offended. He responded by saying, "Yes, he is qualified." He also stated that Foreman uh, Bradley Smith is qualified, and that he has driven the train before. This came to me as a as a big surprise. I then walked down to Sean Terry's office, and I asked him, I said, hey, is this possible? I said, is Bradley Smith and Alan Kosh both qualified to be able to move train and, and act as switchmen? To which he stated, no, uh, that it is possible for a foreman uh, to direct movement from the ground, but only a very simple move, he stated. Al, Alan Kosh uh, then approached me after because uh, I'd gone back uh, to work. He then approached me after and got right in my face. He was offended that I went and spoke with Sean Terry. He said, why did you go speak with Sean Terry after I said that I was qualified? I said, I spoke with Sean Terry. I responded by saying that I just want to make sure that uh, everyone is safe in the shop and I want to know the rules for who and when someone is working with me is qualified to do so. He then told me to remove my lockers uh, from the foreman's change room. So at that time, he had told me to remove my contents from the foreman's uh, change room, basically because I had just tried to make sure that, you know, people are qualified or unqualified like I've been doing throughout this whole thing. So he was upset and told me to get all my stuff out of the uh, foreman's uh, locker room to which I did so. Now at this time, nobody had ever told me that I was not allowed to use the private shower. I continued to use the, 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 the private shower. There was no coaching sessions. Nobody ever once came up to me and said, Adam, do not use that shower. Until uh, April 27th in regards to that harassment case, which I mentioned with Steve Sylvester. He first told me. So I, I did use it once more. And so in regards to that, I guess being now their case for insubordination, then if I'm guilty of using a, a private shower once once more, then, then I am guilty of that. So, but I'm just reiterating, here's how this whole story transpired. And again, it does come from like uh, all of this. And uh, so here's, and I'm going to show you guys the audio clips that I have from the, uh, the foreman for these next two investigations you guys are, are going to hear here. That's funny, no, but, 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 uh, but people are, uh, they don't want to come over to the VMC to work from the OBS side because, uh, you know, well, what we're saying, Johnny, Natalie, 
fucking Anwar, uh, Luca. I mean, all these people, man. You know, but people in but people in agreement one shouldn't be scared to come over to the VMC to work. This place should be a place where people have opportunity and a job and not be picked on and bullied and harassed. You know, you know what I mean? I know, but what can we do about it? You know, it, this should not be the way that the world works here. Yeah. You know, I mean, we have, where, where's the where's the proper leadership? <laughs> you know? The problem is, like, it's not, like, it's never going to change if it's like, the, like it's, it's like a corrupted government. When I went to Mexico, it's never going to change because it's all corrupt. It's the same thing. It's all corrupt, you know? Yeah. And it's like, they want to keep it the way it is so they can keep control of like, the people, the money, the equipment, everything, right? Well, I mean, so, that's normal running a budget and, uh, you know, and, yeah. and, you know, and running payroll. That's like any business. Yeah. I've ran a business. Yeah, I know, but that's not true. So, but, you know, I never, like, bullied or harassed or did, like, strategy or fucked up tactics to control <laughs> to control people at my, well, my, did you, man. At my work sites, you know? So, so you and I, we've been pretty much friends since I've started here. We've always had a good working relationship. Yeah. It's just excuses, like, hey, you go in the shower, like, big deal, like, it's just the end of... I've been using that shower since I started here. Yeah. You okay. know that, everybody knows that. Okay, you want to take a shower there? Okay. <laughs> it's not like you're stealing something. You want to take your shower there or there? Yeah. You're still using the same water. Yeah. And then... Uh, but, you know, and the only reason why they told me not to shower there, or sorry, to re first to remove my stuff, yeah. was because... I told Al he can't switch. <laughs> so it's always connected to another story, you know what I mean? Like if yeah, you know, it will give you shit because you did that, right? Yeah. And I mean, yeah. it's like, hey Al, if you can switch, then why the fuck am I here? <laughs> right? Like you're the foreman. If yeah. are you qualified to switch? Have it's you? A joke, can, I know. Are you LA qualified? Yeah. And if you are, then great. Why am I here? Like even today, uh, Evans the foreman. Yeah. Okay, what if Gagan, if Gagan, he called in sick and then I call in sick and the train comes in. Hey, Evan, are you going to do all the moves? Probably. Well, I asked uh, Sean about this and he said no, they can't. They Sean's here sick. Thing, but you did. They you know? tried to sneak in you know? and do some switching oil. Like that's, yeah. that's why it's... Just like they get the apprentices to, to do work here that they're not supposed to when they're, you know, normally they're supposed to be working under a qualified journeyman. I know. That's this true. is all illegal. Yeah. You know? There you go. Welcome to VRM. It's like, hello. And I mean, what I don't understand is that we're a government company. Like, aren't we supposed to be held at a higher standard? It's supposed to. Right? Same thing, like, uh, people that are in these positions, like of a uh, manager of the West, aren't they supposed to be? And a uh, local chair, aren't these positions supposed to be held to a higher standard, especially in regards to the uh, code of ethics? I know. Right? Like Meanwhile, a, yeah. what, you want to get my friend uh, Dave Desanye to make a fake letter about me so you guys can ding me with more of the man. Does this make any sense, Dave? And then you get Adam Chappelle like on Wednesday on the ground for the... Yeah. For like the, the West Coast. Yeah. He never talked to me all day. I had to start to ask Jake about the switching plan. I'm like, and then I didn't know what time the train's coming in. When was this? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah, uh, I know. What's wrong with him? Like, why he doesn't talk to me? No, every week weird. it's like that. He does it's such a weirdo. And then the train showed up, and he's like yelling on his phone, on his cell phone. Uh, and I'm with Jake, and Jake is trying like to cover up on him, saying, "Oh yeah, like uh, you know, I'm ta you're talking about something else." I'm like, "Yeah, but what's wrong with him? And the train's coming in. Why is he yelling on his cell phone?" Yeah. He's like, I'm gonna look in my files. And then I'm, like taking, like he didn't talk to me all morning, and then he shows up like all aggressive on his cell phone. I heard he uh, misplaced thirty thousand dollars and he doesn't know where to find it. Yeah, he probably stole it. I don't know. Yeah, I got a feeling that he's a, he's a crook too. But anyway, and then Laura Pino, she used to work here as an LA, but she's an engineer now. Yeah, for West Coast. Yeah, like she she came off on the camp car. Yeah. And then she's saying to uh, Adam Lachapel, oh, no one breaks, something like that, right? That does no one breaks apply on the West Coast. Yeah. So you kind of look at her and. He doesn't say nothing, so she said, no one breaks a line on the West Coast. Kind of look at her, and then she's like, did you, like, did you get it? Like, no one did breaks? Did you understand? It's been three, like three times, I was just telling him. And he's just standing there and staring at something, and I'm like, and then she's like, okay, uh, and then she kept, kept going, and she suddenly started talking to me. 
Yeah. He was like fucked up in the morning, completely lost. I think he has. <laughs> so I think I think Animal Chappelle has serious fucking issues. Oh yeah, scary. You know, it's really scary, man. Like, he, yeah. And it's like, how can that guy be working here? Yeah. And harass people and never answer and never talk and be aggressive and violent. Would you put that? Would you ever like say, for instance, like, have you ever reported this to the ombudsman? No. Would and you? I will not because it will go on my case and I will become like you. I'll be on I understand. Yeah, something like fuck this. I'm yeah. It's not worth it. <laughs> I know, I know. I wish I could uh, improve this case, but I gave up a long time ago. Yeah. Now the other thing I wish to mention here, and this is dated Thursday, May the 30th, 2018, and this is a vote of no confidence for Via Rail Local um, 4001 chair regarding Chairperson Heraclius Hercules Calurgis. And it states here, and basically got a lot of signatures here, and it states, Via Rail members of Local 4001 would like to greatly express their concerns for immediate change and to have a re-election take place and a vote of no confidence regarding local chairperson uh, Raculus Calurgis, Hercules. This action reflects the growing dissatisfaction and concern among members of Local 4001 uh, regarding the leadership of Heraculus Calurgis. Not one of Heraculus Calurgis' campaign promises has ever been upheld while he has held this position. As a result, a growing distrust and the belief that he is abusing this position is currently considered to be the norm among members of Local 4001 at Via Rail. We wish to reiterate the fact that we would like to have a motion of no confidence take place and also have an election so that members can vote for new and more responsible people to be involved in the executive positions. The following is what has been transpiring. There has not been one union meeting held since the last election of August 2016. Members have stated that they cannot remember a union meeting being held since 2012 and consider this to be an embarrassment and a direct insult. Members believe that Heraculus Calurgis acts more on behalf of management's objectives and not in the best interest of the union members who elected him and who pay their union dues. Now, members have previously expressed to Heraculus Calurgis on numerous occasions their concerns to have all executive positions filled, but to no avail. The current local chairperson, Heraculus Calurgis, runs the position much like a monopoly. When members try to become more involved, Heraculus Calurgis tries to discredit them and talks behind their backs to other members. Instead, we believe he should be listening to their concerns, providing encouragement, and allowing active participation. Miraculous Calurgis has also abused his position by personally going after local members and discrediting them to management, some of which have resulted in investigations. He also displays unprofessional conduct by discussing private matters in public. Some members also feel that he uses his position intentionally to intimidate them. Members would like to express their concern for an immediate change in regards to local chairperson. It says here, please accept our letter and signatures regarding the seriousness of this matter. We are hoping to have your full assistance and support. And you'll see here, these are all the signatures. Over 60% of people at the Vancouver Maintenance Center who, 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 are, who signed this uh, document. Now basically, the union, when this was submitted, basically never accepted uh, this document because there wasn't one page uh, with all of this information on it where each union member would sign. So they took this as uh, not being able to be accepted. Now I'm going to tell you guys something. We're, they were then told uh, from other, uh, another uh, union member that uh, basically that, that union meetings would start happening. Now I haven't been with the company now again since uh, June the 12th, 2018. And even to this date None of the executive positions have been filled. No union meetings have been held. 
there was uh, one attempt at uh, a union meeting, but what I've been told is it's just uh, uh, garbage. Everybody keeps uh, has messaged me on my phone, called me, uh, wondering how I'm doing. Um, again, I haven't worked, uh, and, and again, this whole thing since I've been terminated uh, due to wrongful dismissal, um, which I'm proving here, I haven't been able to collect employment insurance, um, but again, uh, that's a side note, but again, the union, um, you, Dave Judge uh, uh, had told me that basically they couldn't accept this vote of no confidence, but I'm just reiterating the fact that basically it's the same old, same old, and that uh, members of... Uh, of the union are 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 basically they still have this uh, same mindset. There's uh, there's no confidence in this member here, Raculus Collegius. Here's another example. I don't have a lot of time here. So oh, okay. Here's the other example. The other day, uh, about maybe two weeks ago, they asked us because there was a runaway or not a runaway, but the unit was started to move. And first of all, I thought, were they blaming switch crew for this? And uh, then I found out by talking to the DEMs, no, they had to remove the, 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 the handbrake, and then all of a sudden the engine started to move. So that was the situation. So Sean Terry had brought it up that, hey, make sure that all equipment is secured. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Herc's doing a move with myself. I'm driving, and he's training the two new guys. And what does he want to do right after Sean Terry tells us to secure equipment? He wants me to go do another move and leave the 903 with no handbrake test, nothing. And fucking this is the order of the day, come back and there's no handbrakes on it and the fucking air is bled off. That was the thing. So then next time I talked to the foreman about this, I said, listen, he said, stand your fucking ground. So two weeks ago, same shit. We've got a fucking train here over on C4, eight cars, one unit, and again, wants me to go fuck off to do another to, to do another move. I said, no, I'm not moving. I said, we're going to secure the unit, the handbrakes, and all this kinds of shit. You see what I'm saying? So, like, are we going to be doing this the right way, or are we not going to be doing it the yeah, right way? Just secure the unit, that's for the rules. You don't need uh, her to say, no, you can't. Yeah, but see what happens is, is then, like, uh, because I uh, want to go by the rule, like, so you mentioned personality clashes. Well, yeah, because I don't want to have to, like, what? I can't retire right now. He can. So at the end of the day, who's going to be the one choking on a chain here? It's going to be me because I'm like three Give years. Give me an example of a, of, of a rule violation that, or an incident that's happened out there that management has left out of the carpet. The worst one you get to recently. Well, I mean, that great thing was the first one, no incident report, but like... Uh, the what thing? You know, like that great thing that got ripped the fuck out of the M2 East, but like a lot of the times... No, that, that was the water in the car. Huh? That was one of the water in the car movement. It's always the blue flag policy. I mean, I could like babysit that all day. Fill up. Switch lock on. Foreman lock not applied. Again, that's about 6, 10 a.m. on... June the 2nd, and Foreman Walk is over here on the ground. Blue light, been like this since yesterday. Blue light, switchman lock, Foreman Lock up above. Switchman Lock, Foreman Lock not applied under a blue light. It happens all the time. Okay, well, if you've got concerns with blue flag balls, you should be bringing up the health and safety uh, and Herc is the health and safety rep, or no, the guy mentioned this. Well, he's agreement three. There's currently no agreement one. Well, there has to be somebody representing you guys. By law, well, there has to be somebody representing him. I think uh, for now, Herc's just a stand in for that position, I okay, guess. Yeah, yeah. I should go to Herc. If Herc yeah. isn't doing anything about it, he don't like what he's doing, send somebody to Kenny Howard. Because management has an obligation to follow the rules, the safety rules, all the rules, regulations are out there. Union has an obligation to follow too. And if you're seeing something that's not right, you have an obligation to point it out. And if you're a health and safety rep and they're pointing it out, then you have to go over their head to do it. Yeah. Did you guys look into that? Uh, I reported to Evan about uh, the train being moved or leaving like a uh, that incident with Herc, where he wanted me to leave the train with no handbrakes attached. Did you guys look into that radio? Because uh, I asked uh, Evan twice. 
And he said he was uh, talking with you. You were supposed to look into that. I don't know. Pardon me? I, I'm, not, I'm not sure you're correct. I mean, and it's tough to deal with generic things. I mean, unless me personally, I get specific incidents as this happened at this time and this how it played out, then I can deal with it. Now, you give me a couple of examples, but the broad spectrum of it, they're ignoring shit and sweeping things under the carpet. I can't do anything with that. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and, you know, I'm, my step is about three or four away from where you're at right now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm only going to get involved too if it involves the rule violations of the CROR, such as the handbrake policy. Well, oh, yeah. Use the crane and uh, the overhead crane. Yeah. Meanwhile, they've got the service to your health and safety representative to be introduced at health and safety meetings. Yeah. It can't go away. Yeah, but you know what happens is then, uh, you know, you kind of, uh, then you get attacked another way. So it's like uh, you kind of get like reprisals for it. Like, for instance, uh, LAs have never been qualified to use the crane and uh, the overhead crane. Yeah. Meanwhile, they've asked us, and then at the same time, I said, hey, like to one of the other LAs that recently got disqualified, Johnny, and I don't feel that he received proper training. Uh, but anyways, as soon as I filled out, uh, you know, a hazard ID in regards to that, next, you know, uh, hey, like uh, they start kind of doing things to me. So to me, it's kind of like, yes, you know, you start reporting all this kind of stuff, but then next thing you know, hey, like... Uh, Who you report you to? Well, the foreman and management, that's just one big circle jerk. Yeah, and don't report to the foreman. Is that a, a manager guy? Or what yeah. Is he unionized or manager? They're all management, yeah. Okay, well, forget that. We'll straight to health and safety. So, you look at health and safety rep. Uh, well, we don't have a health and safety rep. We right have right now. Have. Yeah, you do. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, I've been preaching to Herc for like since I've been here about getting all the executive positions uh, filled and uh, they're not, it's like right now there's, uh, he kind of stands in, he's the local chair, but like, uh, yeah.